Okay, Manisha, tell me a little bit about the, the current state of Formula One. You guys are being fairly outspoken. You had to be in Austin. It seemed like everything had reached ahead. How angry are you by what is happening right now to the teams at the lower end? Well, I think it's a very bad sign we are sending out to the fans, uh, to everyone who's basically interested in the sport. I mean, you just imagine the facts are that we have turnovers of billions of dollars and we are not as a sport in a position to actually maintain 11 teams. And it's not about if somebody is having the right business model or not. There's enough there which can be distributed in a different way and you don't harm anybody at any end over there. Your sales force India and Lotus have been put into a group who possibly getting, getting some sort of uh, amount of money from Formula One in order for you to survive, to keep going. How close are you to the situation Marussia and Kato are in, are in? I think what we achieved in Austin was a good start. You know, it, it was high time that we actually went out there. I think the points we make are very valid, they're very reasonable points. And it was good that the other side, let's say the commercial rights holder, acknowledged this and we had a basis to start a dialogue. Now we hope that things can be speeded up, that we can really get to a point where action is taken because it's nice to start a dialogue and to have talks and agree on points, but you have to react quickly. Have, we, have you been made aware though that this fighting fund effectively, I mean there's rumours going around the paddock that it's around about a hundred million dollar mark, you being told that that's going to be divvied up amongst those that are in need yourself? again. There's Rachel was saying, the teams like Force India and yourselves. Well, what the situation is that we've uh, sent a proposal out to the commercial rights holder. We are discussing that and we hope to make some further improvement over here so that we can really get some action within this season. Can I ask if you, do you need that windfall to survive at the moment? Um, I wouldn't say that it's a question of survival or not with that, but yes, it would definitely come in handy. Do you, do you feel there's a case at any point to go to the European Competition Commission about what's going on in Formula 1 at the moment? You're a lawyer, you can explain all this perhaps a little bit better than, than we can, but the fact is that some of these teams are getting vast subsidies to compete compared with you guys, and we know that the distribution of the funds isn't correct at the moment. Well, being a lawyer, I tell you, you have to be careful with these kinds of assessment just off the top of your yeah. hat, you know. It, it all sounds maybe very easy and logical, but you have to look at the detail and you really would have to look carefully that what are the criteria exactly, do they apply to us or not. But I don't think we should really be going to that stage, you know. We, we're all sensible people in here. We all know that whatever we generate in here is through all of us being mm -hmm. in there. So I'm very sure four teams could not generate that much income and I don't think we want to be a DTM at international level. Let's bring it back to next year then, where hopefully we'll be seeing you in the paddock. Are you confident those two drivers you've picked can perform better than the two you've had this year? Oh. I think they can, they can do a better job. I mean, you know, it's, it's the mindset, it's the freshness coming in there. It gives a new impulse in, into the team. And I think that will be very much appreciated because I think from where we are, it can only get better.